The top stories tonight in Y News. Members of the House of Representatives welcome the announcement of Senate President Juan Miguel Migzubiri that the Senate will commence hearings on resolution to amend the economic provisions of the Constitution. Former President Rodrigo Duterte raises the idea of separating Mindanao from the Republic of the Philippines. The prosecution's motion to cancel the passport of expelled Negros Oriental 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Tevez Jr. has been submitted for resolution. And Hamas leader confirms studying a truce proposal made during a me meeting between intelligence officials from Egypt, Israel and the United States. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, January 31, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Hardy Delgado. First in the news. The plan of the Senate to initiate discussions regarding resolution of both Houses No. 6 or RBH 6, which aims to amend the economic provisions of the 1987 Constitution, is being welcomed by members of the House of Representatives. Meanwhile, amidst criticisms and accusations against Speaker Martin Omaldez concerning allegations behind the People's Initiative campaign, the House is scheduled to pass a resolution expressing full support for their leadership. Rosalie Cons will tell us why. House Speaker Martin Romualdez welcomed the announcement of Senate President Juan Miguel Subiri that the Senate will commence hearings on resolution of both houses number no. 6, which aims to amend economic provisions of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. According to the leadership of the House, this is a crucial step towards the long-awaited constitutional amendments. The House of Representatives is also ready to collaborate and contribute to this amendment for the benefit of the people. The House of Representatives anticipates the Senate's proposed changes to the Constitution will be acted upon and approved by the House of Representatives. This sentiment is echoed by other officials and political leaders of the House of Representatives. The House, we, will, we are patient enough in waiting for them to pass it, pass it this March. So, maghintay po ang House. Uh, this will be the game changer. If they approve uh, the economic uh, amendments to the Constitution, there will be no more basis for the people's initiative. The members of the House of Representatives held a caucus on Wednesday afternoon, January 31. On Monday, February 5, the Soloans are scheduled to pass a House resolution expressing support for Speaker Romualdez amidst criticisms and issues thrown at the leadership of the House due to controversy surrounding the People's Initiative campaign. Expressing unwavering solidarity and support to the leadership of the Honorable Speaker Ferdinand Martin Gomez from Wallace and the upholding the integrity and honor of the House of Representatives in the face of intense assault from the Senate in violation of the principle of the interparliamentary courtesy and undue interference in the performance of its legislative and constituent function. On the other hand, regarding the proposal to separate Mindanao from the Philippines, some representatives from Mindanao are against it. I don't see any benefit for this country, for Mindanao, to separate. Tapos, pagtitingnan mo ng buo, hindi maganda sa ekonomiya, nahihiwala yung Mindanao. Okay lang siguro yung mga nakakuha na ng 51 billion pesos na sa par sa kanilang distrito, sa kanilang siyudad, eh paano naman yung mga wala pa? Ihiwalay nyo na? Probably it's another propaganda na lang na dapat ginawa na nila's previous administration. Bakit ngayon? Amen. So, as a Mindanawan, no? my province, sa Lone District, huwag kami gin, uh, hindi pa payag doon. Kasi kung talagang totohanin nila, Ang Kamigin po, babalik na lang sa si Visayas. Gusto ko nandun pa sa star ang Kamigin. We do not want independence, but we want additional budget for the land of promise. 
For Surigao del Norte 2nd District Representative Robert Ace Barbers, the proposal should be further studied. I don't want to shoot it down right away because pag-aralan, tingnan natin, di ba? Uh, if this will redound to more benefits for the people, bakit naman hindi? But as it is today, eh medyo sa tingin ko malabo pa. Former President Rodrigo Duterte advocated for the idea of making Mindanao independent or separating it from the Republic of the Philippines, with Davao del Norte Representative Pantaleon Alvarez being the first to push for this idea. This issue is still amidst discussions in the plan for constitutional amendments. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine National Police has moved to reassure the public, asserting that there was no brewing destabilization plot or coup d'etat plan against the present administration. According to police, Colonel Jean Fajardo, chief of the PNP Public Information Office, they have not monitored any such issues. Fajardo, while addressing the public, urged caution in response to circulating rumors. She emphasized the importance of verifying information before giving credence to speculations. Kung ano man po yung mga naririnig po natin ay uh, let, us, let us be cautious sa mga naririnig po natin na mga balibalita but on the part of the PNP wala po tayong namomonitor na any destabilization plot or even ko dita po. Adding to her statement, Fajardo underlined that the PNP remains steadfast and focusing on its mandate for maintaining peace and order in the country. Despite the political landscape, she affirmed that the PNP remains apolitical and is not swayed by political issues. The Commission on Elections has called on proponents of the People's Initiative to retrieve the signature sheets from their respective local offices. This directive comes in the wake of the suspension of the acceptance of these signatures. Dante Amento tells us why. The Commission on Elections or COMELEC stands on its ground, not throwing away the signature sheets on People's Initiative. Nevertheless, Paul Chief George Irwin Garcia believes it is prudent for the proponents to retrieve the documents from their COMELEC local offices. Garcia said it is while receiving of the same is indefinitely suspended, pending review of their guidelines on People's Initiative. <laughs> Kung ako po yung proponent, hindi po ba mas maganda, kunin nyo na po muna sa COMELEC yung pong mga naipareceive sa amin upang mas baka po sakali, mas maaalagaan po ninyo at napaprotektahan yung mga dokumentong yan. The poll body further explained that any proponent or individual who submitted the signature sheets may visit their local office and return the certification issued by the election officer. Kasi nakalagay doon sa certification na yung local COMELEC namin ay nakatanggap ng mga nakatanggap po sila ng mga signature sheets na to ilang pahina yon at ilan yung signatures na involved doon. Meanwhile, the commission assures to safe keep all the documents in their position. About 7 million signatures have already been submitted to the COMELEC from 209 districts of the 254 legislative districts in the country. Ang commitment namin, aalagaan po namin yung mga dokumento ito hanggang uh, gusto nyo pong i-pull out na lahat yan. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In a move aimed at fostering cooperation and easing tensions, the Philippine Coast Guard or PCG has affirmed its belief that there is no cause for strain between China, Vietnam and the Philippines following an agreement signed with the Vietnam Coast Guard or VCG. The agreement's primary objective is to enhance relations between the two nations, specifically concerning maritime activities in the West Philippine Sea. This collaboration spans various aspects, including security, law enforcement, search and rescue, and environmental protection. Notably, in case of maritime incidents, the Philippines and Vietnam will maintain a single communication channel, a crucial step towards coordination and preventing misunderstandings at sea. Ang purpose nito ay para sa mas mabilis na coordination pagka mayroong nangailangan ng tulong, lalong-lalo na sa mga mangingisda natin. Kasi tingnan mo, nagtitake shelter dito minsan, hinuhuli natin. So minsan di natin alam na kaya pala pumunta rito ay may iniwasan na na sa mga ng panahon. So kung may tatawag sa atin na may papasok ng mga Vietnamese uh, uh, boats dyan, 
mabe-verify natin at makakapag-assist pa tayo. Ganun din tayo kung sakaling may nawala tayong fishermen at nasa coastal din ng Vietnam. It's essential to highlight that prior to this agreement with Vietnam, the Philippines also had a separate agreement with China. The PCG emphasizes that these agreements are not linked to territorial disputes in the West Philippine Sea. Instead, they prioritize the protection of fishermen and the maritime environment. This diplomatic, diplomatic initiative opens doors for bilateral talks between Vietnam and the Philippines, where discussions on anti-piracy measures, anti-terrorism efforts, information sharing, and people-to-people -people exchanges can take center stage. Ang hangari natin ay magkaroon ng kaayusan dyan sa West Philippine Sea. Uh, maging sino mang bansa yung involved, dapat po ay sumusunod sa international rule-based order, uh, kung ano'y naayon sa batas, at uh, nagtataas ng kalinga para po sa uh, marine environment. So yun ang uh, pinipilit nating iangat at pinipilit nating uh, gampanan at uh, iugnay no, sa ating mga kasamang bansa dyan sa pangunguna nga ng Vietnam sa, sa ngayon. At uh, hindi naman siguro ito dapat maging dahilan ng, o maging issue ng China laban sa Pilipinas at Vietnam. Former President Rodrigo Duterte has raised the idea of separating Mindanao from the Republic of the Philippines. JP Nunez will tell us why. Former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte expressed his concern that despite several presidents led the country, there has been no significant improvement. The former president believes that even when new president is elected, the scenario will be just a vicious cycle, risking the future of the next generation. He raised the idea to separate the archipelago of Mindanao from Luzon and Visayas. independent tayo, Kung kayo ninyo, ako gusto ko talaga, gusto ko na. Nagsawa na ako sa gab. Ilang presidente na kasi, wala nangyari sa Pilipinas. Based on his knowledge, there is a process based from the United Nation to gather signature that will decide to separate Mindanao. There's a process in that. I think before the uh, UN, where you would uh, gather signatures from all sorts in Mindanao, Magpirma, verified under oath in the presence of so many people, design that we want to separate. Kaya kung ganon lang naman kayo dyan sa Luzon, pati sa Visayas, bahala kayo. Duterte also stated that even when a separate Mindanao persists, he will not lead the new government. He will leave the governance to existing politicians. He endorses Davao del Norte Representative Pantaleon Alvarez, noting that he was the first to insist the idea of Mindanao cessation. Because eh, Bebot Alvarez, siya yung talagang pinakauna nagpalakad ng mga papel about the desirability of Mindanao seceding from the Republic of the Philippines. Siya yung nanguna talaga. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In the midst of discussions surrounding the proposed secession or separation of Mindanao from the Republic of the Philippines, the Commission on Elections or COMELEC has chosen to remain tight-lipped. Paul Chief George Irving Garcia stated that they are refraining from commenting or providing a position on the matter, deeming it a political issue. Garcia emphasized that COMELEC's role is that of mere implementers of the law. Na wala po kasi kami masasabi sa mga bagay na political. Ang COMELEC is just there to enforce and administer election laws. Dahil nga sa siyempre, yun po yung role namin sa ating saligang batas. Even the Justice Department did not issue a statement, a statement because it has not allegedly reached them.
And for the news abroad, three allies from the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO have signed an agreement on Tuesday to speed up the deployment of troops and weapons via the North Sea ports towards NATO's eastern flank. Maven Dog tells us why. Three NATO allies named Germany, the Netherlands, and Poland signed a deal on Tuesday, January 30 to cut the red tape or regulations that hindered the swift cross-border movement of troops and weapons to the eastern flank. The deal aims to speed up their preparations in case a military conflict with Moscow arises as Russia's large-scale invasion of Ukraine is still ongoing. In previous occasions, NATO has already warned its members that having too much red tape or regulations that are deemed as unnecessary will hinder the movement of troops across Europe and may cause serious problems and delays if a conflict was to erupt with Russia. With this deal, the United States and other NATO allies are expected to deploy large military reinforcements to the Eastern Front through the North Sea ports across Germany and Poland. NATO's forces would still need to comply with various rules around shipping ammunition with advance notices and the permissible length of military convoys. Meanwhile, NATO has been conducting its military exercise, the Steadfast Defender 2024, the largest since the end of the war, which involves up to 90,000 troops. Mavian Dog, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several senators are not keen with the plan of former President Rodrigo Duterte to secede Mindanao from the Philippines. Senate President Juan Miguel Mig Zubiri, a Mindanaoan himself, says separating Mindanao is the last thing that the country wants. He also called on wearing camps to drop the political bickering and focus on important matters that the Filipino people are facing today. With due respect to the former president, I think right now the last thing that we want is the magkagulugulo, magkawatak-watak ang ating bansa. Ang akin dyan ay uh, 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 slow down po natin ang away na yun kasi ang importante dyan ay kapakanan ng taong bayan. Senator Aimee Marcos, meanwhile, also opposes the, the plan which she believes will divide the country. Actually, matagal na natin naririnig niya na mag-independent uh, Mindanao na po at uh, sa ibang sektor sa Mindanao. Dahil uh, lagi natin na uh, kakaligtaan, lagi sila lugi sa budget. Yung sentimentong yan, popular sa Mindanao. Pero sana, sana pinagdadasal ko na hindi naman mangyari. Ayaw naman natin na mawatak-watak ang Pilipinas. Senate Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel says he has no comment and that Duterte's suggestion needs more study. But he further noted that he is against any suggestion of separating a part of the Philippine territory, saying that the country have to work tirelessly on making the nation function as a working effective state. While for Senator Francis Chiza Escudero, the proposal is not constitutionally possible. A Senate panel investigating the controversial People's Initiative will continue its probe despite calls from several House lawmakers to stop the inquiry after calling it a waste of time. This report will tell us why. There's no stopping Senator Aimee Marcos from delving further into the alleged bribery and misrepresentation on the People's Initiative to amend the Constitution. The Senate Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation will conduct its second hearing on Friday, February 2 in Davao City. Earlier, several House leaders urged the Senate to end its investigation and just pass the resolution of both Houses No. 6, which seeks to amend certain economic provisions of the Charter. Sabi nila, walang pake ang Senado. Eh, bakit nang hihimasok sa ating mga investigasyon na umpisahan na, maliwanag naman. Kung maayos naman ang trabaho, wala naman na uh, kinukuble, bakit ililihim pa? Ano bang problema doon? Marcos believes it is necessary to continue the probe to finally put a stop to the movement which senators called as flawed and unconstitutional. Parang hindi kasi maliwanag na wala ng PI dahil uh, sabi ni Pangulo, 
Pangulo, uh, doon sa interview sa Vietnam, pinag-aaralan pa, hindi pa daw maliwanag na patay na yung PI. So tuloy-tuloy lang yung investigation. The presidential sister also calls on Commission on Elections or COMELEC to invalidate and dispose all signature forms as she raises concern on its potential misuse in the future. Habang nakatambak yan at habang nandyan sa COMELEC, eh gagamitin at gagamitin yan. Ang layo pa kaya ng 2028. Malay natin kung sino yung mga ambisyoso dyan na gagamit ng ganyan. Tigilan nila yung uh, pagtatanggap, pero maliban doon, talagang itapon na yan, ibasura na lahat ng mga forms. Marcus adds that the investigation must continue to identify the individuals and public officials involved and hold them accountable. Despite figuring in a heated word war with House Speaker Martin Romualdez, the presidential sister says she has no ill feelings with his cousin. Wala namang galit doon, di namang personal, wala namang ganon. Wala namang kinalaman sa... Uh, <laughs> pamilya, galit na personal. Ang problema, ang nasisira dyan, yung administrasyon, nadala yung pangalan namin, Marcos Administration, ang winawasak niya. Yan ang problema. Ngayon, kung sino yung pasimuno dyan, eh, hindi ko na alam, pero lahat, tinuturo siya. Ano pang gagawin natin sa testimonya ni Mr. Oñate? Eh, hindi naman ako nagsabi nun. Sila nagsabi nun. In today's session, the Senate has formed a subcommittee that will tackle the resolution of both houses number six next week. <laughs> Sabi ko nga, ibaba natin yung temperatura ng politika na yun. Uh, ako naman, back to work na muna kami. We don't want to answer issues about this uh, PI anymore. As far as we're concerned, it's moot and academic. Nagsalita na po yung COMELEC. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, gusto na namin mag uh, uh, balik trabaho pagdating po sa legislations. Senator Sonny Angara, who will lead a discussion in the subcommittee, says they will focus on the contents of the resolution and assures that no political amendments will be discussed. Jorge Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In the ongoing legal saga involving expelled Negros Oriental 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Tevis Jr., his lawyer, attorney Ferdinand Dabasha, has confirmed a significant development. The prosecution's motion to cancel Tevis's passport has been submitted for resolution. Dabasha added that they have also filed their opposition, and the panel of prosecutors has already responded. Now, the fate of this case rests in the hands of the court as it deliberates on the motion and the respective arguments put forth by both parties. Notably, attorney Topasho was not present in today's hearing for the murder cases against Tevises Jr. In recent discussions, the Department of Health or DOH has brought attention to the dangerous implications and purposes associated with the usage of cocaine and fentanyl in the Philippines. While the use of cocaine remains illegal in the country, health experts have revealed a noteworthy trend in the utilization of fentanyl as a painkiller. Gladys Duabi explains why. In a complex landscape where drug policies and health considerations intersect, it is crucial to shed light on recent revelations by health experts. While the use of cocaine remains illegal in the country, there is a growing acknowledgement that fentanyl is being utilized as a painkiller. Fentanyl is a quick acting, it's one of the quickest acting pain relievers. So in fact, ginagamit din namin ng fentanyl sa emergency department for severe trauma. In cases na kailangan ng patient ng uh, immediate pain control. According to the World Health Organization, fentanyl is a potent pain reliever and anesthetic, surpassing morphine's potency by 50 to 100 times. It is employed to alleviate chronic pain in patients and ensure pain-free surgical procedures. The Department of Health emphasizes that fentanyl cannot be purchased over the counter and requires a prescription due to its potential risks. You need a prescription. It's a, it requires a DDB, a yellow prescription, or uh, prescribed by a person with an S2 license or a prohibited drug license. The World Health Organization has linked fentanyl to a concerning rise in deaths, resulting from opioid overdoses, underscoring the need for cautious and regulated use. It is essential to distinguish between the legality of cocaine, which remains prohibited under the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 or Republic Act No. 9165 and the medical application of fentanyl under controlled circumstances. 
Cocaine naman is, uh, is not a drug that's being used. Cocaine, cocaine is used for, is used by, uh, it's uh, one of our dangerous drugs listed uh, by the DDB. So it's not in the market. Yung fentanyl, may FDA registration yun. Yung cocaine, walang, ano yun. So it's an uh, illegal, it's part of the list of dangerous drugs. And it is, it comes in the country imported by uh, mga drug pushers. The use of cocaine is prohibited for Filipinos as it can disrupt the mental and physical health of an individual. Recent discussions surrounding fentanyl and cocaine were prompted by accusations made by former President Rodrigo Duterte against President Ferdinand Bongo Marcos Jr. alleging the use of illegal drugs, to which PBBM responded fentanyl had impaired Duterte's health. Glabi, Stuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Education has announced a gradual shift in the academic calendar back to the month of June. The agency is actively engaging in ongoing discussions and consultations with various committees to ensure a well thought out and effective implementation. Jed Neresina details why. Mildred is in favor of returning the old academic calendar because the children will be more comfortable being at home when the summer season comes. Sobrang init, hindi rin ano, hindi magiging comfortable yung mga bata. Para sa akin, okay lang po na ibalik po yung ano, yung par parang March and April po para bakasyon po sila. Roberto also shared the same reaction because he said the children can play and enjoy better if it is not rainy season. Pabor ako doon kasi pag summer dapat makapaglaro mga bata, hindi yung pagkano nila, bakasyon nila tagulan, parang walang magagawa. House Committee on Basic Education and Culture Chairperson Roman Romulo said that the return of the old academic calendar will be done gradually. This Monday, there was a committee meeting regarding this because many people filed a bill or resolution encouraging the Department of Education to bring back the opening of classes to the month of June. But according to Congressman Romulo, it cannot be done abruptly. Pinaliwanag po niya sa amin na base sa kanilang mga pagkaaral at sa mga konsultasyon, uh, maaari po yung uh, direksyon na po nila ay mabalik po sa dating academic calendar. Pero uh, paalala lang po sa amin ng DepEd, una ay meron pa rin silang mga konsultasyon na gagawin dun sa kanilang mga regional direct, uh, director, yung mga teacher nila. At pangalawa po, hindi magiging in relation to this, one of their expected problems is climate change since in the month of June, rain and flooding are expected. According to Pag-asa, weather conditions are unpredictable, so the start of the academic year does not really matter. But the DEPED thinks that they can respond better if the start of school is in the month of June. Based sa, pa, sa sinabi sa amin ng DEPED, uh, ang tingin nila ay talagang uh, mas makaka, mas makakarespondi sila ng maayos kung maibalik sa June ang uh, pumpisa ng academic calendar. According to Representative Romulo, this transition will not be sudden because the academic break of students and teachers will be disrupted and affected. So consultation and discussion to this issue is still ongoing so that it can be properly implemented. Jed Neresina, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Bureau of Internal Revenue or BIR Commissioner Romulo Lumagi Jr. has announced that the release of Revenue Memorandum Circular No. 17-2024 marks an exemption of 21 essential medicines catering to conditions such as cancer, diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease, mental illness, and tuberculosis from the value-added tax or VAT. This move comes in response to a letter from the Food and Drug Administration of the Department of Health, or DOH, endorsing an update on the list of VAT-exempt products under Republic Act Numbers 10963 and 11534. Commissioner Lomagi's action aligns with the vision of Bagong Pilipinas, where services for Filipinos are characterized by speed and reliability. The exemption of these 21 medicines from VAT is just the beginning of the services that the BIR aims to offer to the public in 2024. The DOH has welcomed this initiative, recognizing its potential to significantly assist Filipinos grappling with various diseases.
And in other global news, a free-face Gaza truce plan was discussed in Paris, France, on the weekend between Egypt, Israel, and United States intelligence leaders. The plans has been sent to Gaza to obtain the opinions of Hamas leaders. The group's leader, Ismail Haniyeh, confirmed Hamas leadership was studying the proposal according to sources. The first phase of the deal would consist of a pause in fighting and the release of elderly, civilian women, and children's hostages children's hostages. It would also allow for the resumption of major food and medicine deliveries to Gaza. Female Israeli soldiers will be released on the second phase while also increasing aid deliveries and restoration of utility services to Gaza. Hamas states this phase would also involve the liberation of male military recruits. The third phase will see the release of the deceased bodies of Israeli troops in exchange for freeing Palestinians prisoners. The ultimate goal of the phase approach is to end the war and final release of hostages and prisoners. If accepted by Hamas, it could take days or weeks to settle the logistical details of the truce. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is being pushed by hardline coalition partners in his government to continue the war, with far-right Israeli minister Itamar ben Gavir suggesting that a deal with Hamas would lead to a government collapse. Families of the remaining Israeli captives held by Hamas, on the other hand, are likewise putting pressure on Netanyahu to reach a deal to secure their release. The Berlin-Brandenburg Airport in Germany has announced that there will be no departures for passengers on Thursday, February 1. The announcement comes after the public sector union Verdi said that security staff will hold strikes across the airports in Germany also on Thursday over pay demands. Around 170 takeoffs and landings for almost 50,000 passengers were already planned for the airport. Arrivals into Berlin through other airlines are also expected to face impacts. Meanwhile, passengers are asked to contact, to contact their airline for further information on rebooking or seeking alternative travel options. The UK is bracing for a population surge of over 6 million, according to recent figures from the Office for National Statistics. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is under scrutiny, particularly from within his own party. Hosilito Likido will tell us why live. Good evening, Hosilito. Good evening, LC. As the Office for National Statistics, or ONS, projects a substantial increase in the UK population by over 6 million, reaching nearly 74 million by 2036, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak faces criticism from his within his own party. Net migration accounting for 92% of the projected growth has sparked concerns among Brexit-supporting MPs who had pledged to regain control over immigration. The figures indicate a potential milestone of 70 million by mid-2026, a decade earlier than previously estimated in 2022. Right-wing backbenchers urged the Prime Minister to address the issue, emphasizing the strain on essential services such as schools, NHS, and housing. While Downing Street insists on Sunak's commitment to reducing net migration swiftly, former Home Secretary Suela Braverman calls for a cap on overall numbers to hold the government accountable. Home Secretary James cleverly acknowledges the need to return to sustainable migration levels and announces new restrictions including limitations on foreign care workers bringing relatives and an increase in the minimum salary for skilled worker visas from 26,200 to 38,700 pounds. Despite concerns about potential economic gaps resulting from reduced migration, the government emphasizes its responsibility to stimulate economic growth without relying excessively on migration. The population growth, driven largely by international migration, prompts debates within the Conservative Party about the pace of change and the potential impact on housing and public services. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Joselito Likidor, reporting live from Malaysia.
And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Daily Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God, from the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 27. It says, He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. And those are the reasons behind the news, January 31, 2024. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold because we need to know. We will always ask why. I'm Hardin Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God.